We often hear about nanometers. For instance, latest Apple M1 Ultra chip is in 5 nanometers, while Intel's Alder Lake chip is in 10 nanometers. Have you ever wondered, what are those nanometers? And the most important, why switching to smaller technology nodes brings such a huge power and speed benefits for the modern chips? Let's find out. You know, for the modern processors, technology node is a really big deal. During the last 70 years, we went from one centimeter transistor to the first integrated circuit to two nanometers and one nanometer transistors right now. And this is quite a leap, I would say. Essentially, technology node corresponds to the physical feature size of the transistor. You know, originally every CPU or GPU is built out of transistors. Those are tiny uh, but very powerful guys. Those transistors are microscopic devices, or I better say nanoscopic devices. And these are basically switches which control the flow of electric current and allow CPU or GPU to perform its logical function. Originally, technology node which we hear, like 28 nanometers or 65 nanometers, are referring to the minimum lithographic feature which can be drawn on the layout. It's like a half pitch or a gate length. However, there is no standardization in the naming of technology nodes. So, in case of 65 nanometers or 28 nanometers, the naming is actually coming from the minimum gate length of the transistor. This is a transistor, and this is a gate, and the channel is actually formed under the gate. The gate voltage controls the available charge carriers in the channel. It determines whether current can flow or not. For instance, if this distance is 65 nanometers, we call it a 65 nanometers transistor. So, generally, technology nodes gives a good indication about how densely I can pack transistors in this technology. And for a long, long time, the gate length of the transistor was matching the technology name. Last time it was the case for 28 nanometers process and for some of 22 nanometers process, so for the last advanced planar transistors. For this one, you can just go and draw a 28 nanometer gate and it will be fabricated. Starting from 22 nanometers technology, we switch to FinFET. And FinFET transistors are actually 3D. So here, the physical gate length just sadly lost its meaning. Recent technology nodes, such as 10 nanometers or 5 nanometers, do not correspond at all to any gate length or half pitch distance anymore. And you know, transistors don't look the same anymore. We switched from planar structures to finfet like structures, and with the recent breakthrough of IBM and Samsung, we have gate all around transistors, and we even have vertical VTFET transistors. If you're interested to learn more about this transistor evolution, you can check out this video later on. So, since then, the technology node names were taken over by marketing guys, and now they represent the slightly modified, improved uh, manufacturing process. For instance, here you can see for 10 nanometer technology, a half pitch distance is 32 nanometers. Gate length is 19 nanometers, fin width is 7.2 nanometers. So why it is called 10 nanometers technology is a valid question. FinFET technology has fins, so the gate isn't just a rectangle anymore, and there is spacing between these fins, so it's getting more and more complicated. We cannot apply our conventional thinking to 7 nanometers, 5 nanometers transistors. It just doesn't work anymore. You see, now this nanometers number is more of a marketing number, which benchmarks this new technology against the conventional planar transistor. The way to think of it, 5 nanometers is called 5 nanometers. If it delivers expected performance, so driving capability 
of the imaginary device where the channel would be shrink to 5 nanometers. Even though the channel is actually bigger and there is no 5 nanometers dimensions at all. Here, this plot shows the driving capability of the transistor versus technology node. So, 5 nanometer device lands here based on the current drive. Now, the smaller the node number, the better it is. You know, with each technology, we get faster and smaller devices, consuming less power. But do you know why? I often mention that switching to smaller technology nodes brings huge benefits in power consumption. And we want that. We want our phones or laptops to last longer, so to dissipate less power. The lower supply voltage, the lower is power, total power consumption of the chip. And what is power? It is current multiplied by voltage. So in order to lower the power, we need to lower the current or the voltage. The lower the supply voltage and the smaller the device means the lower switching power we get. And scaling the technology down affecting actually both of them. Here you can see supply voltage scaling versus technology scaling. You see, in the old 350 nanometers technology, the core supply is 3.3 volt. While modern 10 nanometer chips operate at core supply at about 0.7 volt. For a long time, supply voltage was scaling together with the technology node due to the thinning of gate oxide and faster switching rates. However, it is not directly linked to the nanometers which we discuss. Actually, field effect is proportional to gate oxide thickness. That's why by lowering the gate oxide thickness, we can lower the supply voltage. This was going well for a while. However, for the modern transistors, let's say 5 nanometers transistor, the gate oxide thickness is already so thin, I think it's about 30 angstroms thin, so it is hard to push the voltage, supply voltage scaling further down. This power scaling is really important because it enables new applications, different low power applications, or adding new functionality to the chip staying at the same power budget. Now, when you next time will watch the Apple presentation of M2 and they switch from 5 nanometers to 3 nanometers, for example, and they announce like 30% better power efficiency, you will understand one of the reasons where this improvement comes from, right? The second advantage of technology scaling is speed. So with each technology node, transistors become faster, so they switch faster. And why is that? If we see a transistor as a tiny switch, in order to switch from 0 to 1 or another way around from 1 to 0, we need to charge a capacitance. And the smaller the transistor, the smaller the capacitance we need to charge. This is a very basic explanation. Just like charge and discharge RC constant, so the switching speed is limited by gate capacitance. So for transition to be fast, transistors have to be small. However, it is worth mentioning that in modern technology nodes like 7 nanometers, 5 nanometers, the speed is mostly limited by interconnect, so by the resistance component. That's why we still have cores running at only several gigahertz in 10 nanometers node. And the last, but not the least, the most obvious advantage of switching to smaller technology nodes is area benefits, right? Switching to smaller technology nodes allow greater transistor density. Having smaller transistor means you can fit more of them per unit area. At the end, it means smaller and lighter products for your customer. So, these 22 nanometers, 10 nanometers represent the technology progress. And the most interesting thing, this can differ between different fabs. If we talk about the biggest fabs out there, like TSMC, Samsung, Intel, Global Foundries, their technology node names can differ. As an example, manufacturing parameters for Intel's 10 nanometers process are very close to the values TSMC and Samsung use for what they call a 7 nanometers process. 
So actually Intel's 10 nanometers transistor density is already higher than Samsung's 10 nanometers and pretty comparable to TSMC's 7 nanometers. There's also marketing plays a huge role and the rebranding which Intel did a year ago was definitely a good idea. Now previous Intel's 10 nanometers is called Intel 7. Previous Intel's 7 nanometers is called Intel 4. And actually now they renamed nodes to a dimensionless number. And I think it's a good idea because when you have a dimension there, it might be confusing and it might encourage people to think that such a dimension actually exists. And as we know now, it doesn't exist anymore. Now, when we hear about new 1 nanometer transistor by TSMC, it means they created a new manufacturing process with a smaller feature size than the previous technology node. In this way, they demonstrate a progress in manufacturing and announce a new device with new capabilities. We know better PPA, power, performance and area. This means fabulous companies like Apple, AMD, Qualcomm can take advantage of new technology and use it for their next CPU or GPU. Fabrication at the state-of-the-art technology nodes is extremely complex and expensive process. And usually it takes a couple of years from the moment when they announce a new technology till the first productive wafers are manufactured. And very often you need new expensive equipment to enable this new manufacturing. For instance, talking of 5 nanometers process, this technology heavily relies on extreme ultraviolet lithography. Each EV tool costs about $120 million, and these tools are also complex to maintain and to run. To run 5 nanometer wafers at large volume, they need lots of such tools. That's why each 300 mm wafer at this technology by TSMC cost about $17,000. In comparison, a 7 nm wafer costs about twice cheaper, about $9,000. Even though with each technology node wafer prices skyrocket, chip makers are still ready to pay for it, to get power and area benefits which we just discussed. All the progress we did in technology development over the last years is simply impressive, because at the moment TSMC is already fabricating first productive 3 nanometer wafers. And the first 1 nanometer, 2 nanometer transistors are already there on the test wafers. So it is truly good progress. And this actually plays a huge role in our modern chips. CPUs, GPUs, TPUs, NPUs, they're getting better and faster. So here we should definitely give a credit to the technology development engineers. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you want to support me creating these videos, the link to the Patreon is in the description below. Now, you may like to check out another video on my channel where I explain you vertical transistors by IBM. It is fun, so I will link it here. Thank you for watching and see you in my next episode. Ciao!